Welcome back to the Coding Fanatic YouTube channel. I'm your host, Richard, and here at Coding Fanatic, I am all about growing efficiently as an Android developer and teaching you developers and those of you out there on the fence about the industry how to do the same. If that sounds like content that you're interested in, then hit subscribe and uh, turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I have new content like this each week. Also, head to the Coding Fanatic website, join the mailing list, and you'll be the first to know before anybody else when I have new videos and content out like this. For those of you who are new to the channel, Road to Pro is a series I made where I tell you guys stories about things that I've experienced in the world of software development and or just in tech in general and what I did, what I learned from it, and so that when you find yourself in a similar situation, you can not make the same mistakes I did or you can better navigate them better than I did. Early in my tech career, I interviewed with this one company many many years ago and it was one of my earlier tech positions so I was a little less experienced but I was very I was pretty excited I mean I have always liked using computers and I've always liked working with technology in my just for fun so any experience that I could get I was really really anxious or really excited about so I interviewed with this company and it, everything went well for the first few interviews, but the final one was just, it was to date the worst interview I've ever had. The person when I was interviewing, she didn't really, when she came in, I introduced myself, you know, went to shake, my, to shake her hand and everything, and she just kind of looked at me and didn't, really, didn't even tell me her name or anything like that. So uh, we sat down and I'm expecting, okay, maybe this, this person is going to give me like some tough tough questions and I, I gotta admit I was not in any way prepared for their line of questioning the problem was though they didn't ask me anything about tech or anything related to the position all the questions they asked me were about my job experience or like where I've worked dating back almost 10 years so they'd ask like, oh where did you work where's your most pre previous position what did you do okay well what did you do before that and what did you do before that and so on and so forth I mean, it got to the point that we were talking about jobs, like old retail jobs that I worked like years, years, years ago when I was even still in school. So uh, I, I was a little confused, but I wasn't visibly upset or anything because while I'm answering these questions, I'm thinking in the back of my head, why is she asking me like, what is, what is my time as a waiter or a bartender or anything? What does any of that have to do? with the interview right now. This, this is supposed to be for a tech company. That's when it hit me. This was the person in charge of background checks. On the application, they said that they have a box that towards the end that said, oh, are you willing to forgo a background check in order to attain a position? So I'm, I'm like, oh, okay. That's when it hit me like, okay, everyone else has already asked me the majority or has already asked me the tech questions and things about like the, the the softer sides of the job like the the culture and things like that so at this point they already have all the information they they really need the only thing left is for them to confirm that i am who i say i am hence the line of questioning the interview went on and the questions went on and on but towards the end something kind of odd happened the interviewer she she's looking at my resume and then she starts chuckling to herself and she asked me, <laughs> did it really take you this long to finish your degree program? <laughs> and she's like, actually like laughing at me. And I was like, what, what, what's, what? It's something didn't seem right. I'm like, what is going on here? You brought me in here for this interview. I showed up on time, I'm respectful. I'm answering all your questions, but you're not asking me anything related to technology and you're grilling me about where I worked at like eight or nine years ago before I even, while I was still in school. And now you're laughing and chuckling to yourself and saying like, oh, uh, it took you this long to get your degree. <laughs> so, it, it, I mean, it was, it was odd. It was kind of weird, man. I mean, it's, it's pretty rude, but like so blatantly rude. Why would someone do that during an interview? I explained to the interviewer, calm and cool voice. I let them know what my situation was while I was attending school at, the, at, at my previous school and kind of broke down that 
there were times where I had to take off from school to deal with family responsibilities and I didn't want to waste my time or my money in school. I wanted to make sure that I was present and focused whenever I was, whenever I attended classes. So my goal was to only go to school when I had those other responsibilities cleared up. So, you know, that, that was, that was my response to that. I was cool. I was calm. And I figured like, okay, yeah, now they have a better understanding so they can they'll probably chill out with the third degree. She didn't even say anything. <laughs> she didn't even look up from a piece of paper. Like she asked, I mean, she asked me a question. I answered it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but she didn't really have a, any response. So, okay. Looking back, I would have walked away from an interview like that today. If someone is acting is being rude or disrespectful to you during the interview, I mean, it, it just just leave. You don't have to stay, right? I mean, interviewing is a two-way street. I've said this before, but just to reiterate, you're not just there to prove to them that you're capable of the job. They're there. They are supposed to prove to you that they're worthy of teaming up with you. So if you go in there and you're showing them and they're not showing you any type of respect. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be the tech, the lead tech person. It could be the person that they hired to do background checks. Either way, if they're going to be rude, then it's not worth it. I mean, yeah, sometimes you go into a job and you have coworkers who are a bit abrasive or, or whatever, or they can be, they can come off as, you know, kind of cold sometimes or whatever. But I, I wasn't even on the payroll yet. This is only the interview. So if I have to, I'm not putting up with this and I haven't even started getting paid. Well, no, man, no way. Absolutely not. So, but you know, back then I was a bit more eager to get into the, to, to work in the industry. So I was more willing to put up with different things. And, and also I hadn't experienced anything like this before. So this was a first for me to have someone behave like this during an interview. So I figure, well, you know, maybe if I just take it with a smile and, you know, I'm just, I keep cool and maintain my composure, then everything will be fine. And once I answer all their questions, then yeah, then yeah, she'll lay off. Everything will be, will be okay. But yeah, looking back, I would just walk out of there. I wouldn't even stay for an interview like that. Absolutely not. Ideally, you're going to spend a few years with any organization or company that you get with. The goal is to spend as much time as you can soaking up new skills and helping them build up, provide value to their company so that they can build their product or their team. There are plenty of companies out there that would be willing to hire someone like you. There are people who, or there are companies that are focused on building strong teams and they want to build, bring people on who they can support and who can support them and have like a, you know, everybody's helping, helping each other. Help me, help you. There is no reason to settle and put up with disrespect or rudeness, especially if it's during the interview process. It's, it's, it's not worth it. Stand up for yourself, get up and walk away, go find another place, find another place to interview with. You know, it, it's just, it's really, in the end, it's never, it's never going to be worth it. It's never going to be worth it. I understand everyone has different financial obligations and things like that, but you know, you do what you can, but if you're in a position where you don't, where you can walk away, then I would say do it every time. Don't think that it's going to get better or, oh, this is just a test or anything like that. It's like, don't, just don't even bother with it. Oh, I almost forgot. So the person that I interviewed with, as it turns out, she was the CEO of the company the whole time. And that was the reason why she was giving me the third degree. It was some kind of interview tactic or something. Apparently, she read about it in a book or something like that. I heard from uh, someone, a friend of mine who worked at that company later on. We, uh, when I told them about what happened, they explained, like, oh, yeah, yeah, she likes to read different books on how to be a manager and things like that. And she picked it up somewhere. And apparently, it's like a tactic to see how you deal with pressure or something. But I mean, to me, that doesn't, that's not a valid way to gauge someone's ability to work under pressure. If you want to test my ability to work under pressure, give me a difficult problem to solve 
and see how I deal with it. In fact, that is what most all tech companies do with technical interviews. They give you an hour to build up some something, write some code and do something. You don't even always have to write code. Sometimes you can write pseudocode. As long as you can show your process of thinking, your line of thinking, and how you approach a problem, then they're able to gauge, okay, this is this person, their approach is, could be useful on our team, and let's bring this person on. Or, uh, you know what, I'm looking for someone who has more technical background and is more able to actually do this problem. So, you know, I'll bring them in. It doesn't matter. <laughs> they really, like, there's, there's no reason to treat someone like that. It just never is. And if that's their way of gauging your preparedness for a, for, for a technical, for, for like a, a, a stressful situation or dealing with technology, that doesn't even make sense. Walk away, man. Yeah. So that, that was a, an interesting experience for me, but thankfully I got to experience so that I can pass my lessons on to you. But you know what I always say about things like this. There will be many companies, there will be many positions, and many CEOs with many types of strategies for gauging your preparedness, but there will always only be one of you. Thank you all again for coming and visiting the Coding for Night YouTube channel. I'm your host, Richard. If you like content like this, then subscribe, turn on notifications so you know when I put out new content like this each week. Also, head on over to the Coding Fanatic website, join the mailing list, and you'll be the first to know when I have new content like this available. If you like some of the artwork that I have behind me on this wall, I'm going to link the description to Late, Bro Late Bloomer on Instagram, as well as Sucker Free Art in the description below. So again, thank you all for tuning in. I'm your host, Richard, and I will see you all on the next one. Peace.